let's begin. Let's begin. Let's start with our breathing. Let's put one hand on our belly, one hand on our chest. Feet are hip width apart. Knees are soft. Shoulders are relaxed. Everything's relaxed, but the breath is full. Just pause for a moment and kind of close your eyes and, and relax, but feel the breathing is the biggest part of your awareness right at this moment. See how that feels. It's almost like the breath is holding us up. It's a nice feeling. Breathing from the belly up through the center of the ribs all the way up into the upper ribs. And then exhaling from the upper ribs, the middle of the ribs, and then last, the belly presses the air out. So that's called the wave breath. And you don't have to be standing completely immobile when you do a wave breath. Okay. In fact, if you are very relaxed, I'll exaggerate it. You may even find your body doing a little wave-like motion. I'm exaggerating the motion. Breathing in. And breathing out. This is a really full and complete Qigong practice to breathe like this. We feel grounded on our feet. We start to bring our busy whirlwind of a mind to the center point. To the present moment. We relax the muscles of our joints. And we fill up with, hey, look, Ruth is here. We fill up with oxygen. Okay, wave breath. One more time. Belly, ribs, chest, exhale, chest, ribs, belly. Now let's just tap. Let's just tap on our lung points. It's kind of a King Kong type of move. Tapping right below the collarbones. Breathing. We're going to be working on some nice stretches for the neck and the shoulders in a bit. So this is a good way to get the energy moving in there. And open the right arm and tap down the inside of the arm. And turn the hand over, tap up the outside of the arm to the top of the shoulder. And then again, down the inside of the arm, getting the energy to flow through the meridians, up the outside of the arm. It's also a great way to wake up your brain, you know, gets the, gets the chi flowing a little bit more easily when you tap. Now, lung points. Uh, let's pause and tap a, for a moment in the middle, the thymus gland, which is the same cavity that houses the heart. So this is another nice practice for keeping your heart healthy. Ah, and then we go down the other arm. Tap or slap, right? Whatever feels better to you. You could do a light, loose fist. If you're real muscly, that might help you get into the muscles more. <clears throat> Breathing. <sighs> now let's tap, tap on the lower back. Up and down the lower back, the kidneys. And then we haven't done this for a little while. Tap on the sides of the legs, bend the knees, and we'll tap all the way down the sides of the legs, over the feet, up the insides of the legs. Front of the hips. We're going to be working on this joint later, too, so let's pause here for a moment. I'm, I'm tapping right where the hip hinge is, right there. 
psoas muscles, good for posture. What else is in there? A lot of lymph glands. Now side, let's go toward the back, side back. This isn't, well, it is an acupressure point. This is, these are the acupressure points right here called jumping round. It feels good, and you might want to use like the heel of your hand to really get into those muscles there on the, the top of the back of the hip. This is a great place to tap and explore and get some flow going. Great place if you have sciatica. This will help to loosen up the tissues, the fascia that wrap the muscles. Now let's tap down the sides of the legs, IT band, over the feet and up the inside of the legs. And we'll go a little faster now, tapping from the kidneys down the, you can go down the back or the sides of the legs. Around the front, up the insides of the legs. Ah. So you get that idea of the pattern of the way the chi flows. Up. Back to the center and let's tap gently right about an inch or two below the belly button. One hand replaces the other. This is the C of chi. This is good for building metabolic fire. Good for digesting all that Memorial Day feast that you probably enjoyed. I hope you did. Or breathe getting energy into the digestive system this is also a point for just energy in general if you're feeling a little like sluggish you could work on this point you could also just press into it with your fingertips push right in take a deep breath it's a point that we don't have an, I don't want to generalize, but I do, you know, most of us don't have a real friendly, loving relationship with this part of our body. But think of this, if you get familiar with this area, it's your center, right? I'm always talking about the lower Dantian. This is, this is like a, an entry place to bring energy into your center. If you start to associate this part of the body with being centered, your balance, physical balance, this is your center of gravity, your emotional center, when the energy is here, it's not stuck up here making us anxious, right? One of the really fantastic principles of Qigong. Right, we were talking before class about getting distracted, so much going on. I forgot to even mention that I'm not here Sunday, that things like that. When you're feeling like uh ah, flying out of you know, your thoughts are flying away from you, you can always say, Okay, bring it back to the center. Now, interestingly, right, this is on the it's called the uh conception <clears throat> meridian, conception vessel runs from the floor of the pelvis and it ends here, right? And then this point right above it that we've been playing around with, I call it the Johnny Carson point, right here, you could press. It's another way to get centered. Press right here, same line as this acupressure point. The C of Chi, and this is governing vessel 26. You don't have to remember that. Just remember, oh, if I want to get centered, I could do it here. If that doesn't help, maybe I could do it here. This is called the center of the person point. And this helps connect your mind and your body. You can do both. Hey, that's an idea. Let's do that. Let's press right here. And just, you don't have to press hard here, but just to feel that point and breathe. <sighs> and say to yourself, oh, I do have a source of support down here as well. I can breathe into this area. There are a lot of neurotransmitters that are created in this part of the body, the gut. And this is helping clear brain fog, right? 
Ah, now we're centered. Energetically centered. Now let's bend the knees and just rotate and we'll go right into tapping on the door of life. And this morning, you're all doing great. You all know this one, right? This morning, really focus on the arms being loose. Like they almost like they have no bones. <clears throat> And then at the end, you can tap again on the two points, lower back, door life. Door life is the lower back and the uh, front, the sea of chi. Breathe. Ah, waking up and the movement of the spine starts to swirl the energy up through the spinal column, all the way into the neck and the shoulders, the crown of the head. Feel your feet on the floor and slow it down, slow it down and relax. Okay, let's go into this one now. Let's step toward the toward your uh, corner with your right foot forward. And we're going to do the kind of the big juicy version of the shoulder circles, silk reeling for the shoulders. So you lean forward a little bit, the front arm dangles, and it's inside the front leg. So there's a little turn that's going to happen. As you squeeze the shoulder up, you turn the chest forward and around. That's it. That's it. Right. And relax. And when you're relaxing, you can relax your neck too, so you can kind of look toward the space behind you. And then squeeze and turn and look to the face behind you in the other direction. <sighs> Opening up the shoulders. This looks beautiful, everybody. Silk reeling exercises make our joints strong and smooth. Good, excellent, excellent. Squeeze the shoulder up. Squeeze. That's it, Ted. You got it. That looks great. Good, Tim. Good, everybody. And pay attention, you know, just in a nice, gentle, soft way. Pay attention in class to the exercises that you're like, oh, good, she's doing that one today. Those are the exercises. When you get that feeling, those are the exercises you might want to do every day on your own, right? If you really enjoy them, that means your chi is really responding well. Okay, let's do the other side. I mentioned that because a lot of people like this one, including me. It kind of gets the upper and the lower body moving at once. Nice, gorgeous. Okay, so it's the other side now. So your other leg is forward. The arm hangs in front. <clears throat> Pardon. There you go. Nice, Margaret. And the breathing is full and natural. See, we're opening those places we tapped on earlier. We're now using movement to... Open the circulation through the chest, the lungs, shoulder, the upper back, lower back, hips. They're kind of all involved. One more time. Ah, get the creaks out. Good, nice. Nice. Oh, look at Carol swinging away. That's a good idea. Let's do that one, Carol. Let's do this. <sighs> the pump. Nice and easy. Yeah. Right, Tim. Tim's already, he knows if you, if you want to, you can let your body go down and up. That's an option. If that feels good, go for it. It's going to strengthen you and stretch your back a little. If that doesn't feel good, then you get a lot of the benefits staying in line with gravity. Ah, this is a very good one for pumping energy into the kidneys. 
our camera is not working, but we are here. In our, oh, good, Sue Ellen and Jim. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Sorry, if I suddenly say something out of context, I'm reading a chat. <sighs> good, yeah, so this is pumping energy. It's like you're throwing extra chi right back to the door of life. Yeah. Strengthens your knees, too. Go easy, though. If it hurts your knees, you don't have to bend them much. Slow down, slow down. Ah, and relax. Feel the difference, right? She's starting to really bubble. Now we're going to do a nice variation, a nice neck and shoulder stretch that will extend all the way up into your relaxing your jaw muscles. So you bring your palms right to the door of life. Now, most people, including myself, if I bring my hands back like that, my shoulders kind of roll forward. If you can, try to roll your shoulders back. Good. Nice, Claudia. I can see that very clearly. Good, Ruth. Good, everybody. I can say good, Judy. Oh, now breathe. Shoulders are back, but our head is still in neutral alignment. That in itself is a big stretch. But we're going to drop the head to the side. Okay, just pause there for a moment. Now, this will be a rotation, a little half rotation. Just rotate the chin down toward the chest as though you're looking down towards your toes. Then come back to where you began, ear to shoulder, and rotate the chin up toward the ceiling. You'll feel a very nice stretch on the opposite side of the front of the neck. And again, rotate the chin down, all on the same side. You may feel that stretch all the way to the opposite shoulder and back. You can go slowly as you need. And again, rotating the chin up. Good. Sue, Sue R., this might be a really nice one for you. Just be real mindful of how it feels. This might be a good one for you to get into that chronic tight spot you have. Excellent. Let's add the cleansing breath. So exhale through your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through the mouth. And the next time you're, you come back with the ear facing the shoulder, just bring the chin to the center of the chest. This is to transition over to the other side. This is a good one. I, we haven't done this in a long time. Great. So it doesn't matter which direction you go, but the, you're just alternating from the chin to the chest. Feeling the stretch all the way down the opposite side of the upper back. Chin to the ceiling. Excellent. Isn't this a nice one? I love this one. As you do this, keep your teeth lightly together. So that you feel the stretch perhaps going all the way up behind the ear. Could exhale through the mouth to cleanse out a little, purge out a little tension or stress. And then chin to the chest, relax the arms, woo, and float it up. Ah, just loosen it a little bit, shake it out. That felt good, huh? Let's bring our thumbs to the base of the skull now. One more, since we're working on this whole area here. Let's go over the gates to the brain. Um, and I was experimenting. If you're not sure about where these points are, here's a neat way to find them. Bring your thumbs in toward the muscles that run right up the back of your neck. And put your, put your thumbs right on those muscles on either side of your spine there. And do a little yes nod, and you'll feel the muscles kind of contracting and lengthening. You feel them moving. That's the top of your trapezius muscle where they connect. 
Now, the point we're going for, the points we're going for are to the outside of those muscles. They're out away from those muscles toward the ears. And you'll find little, two little depressions, and those are the gates of the brain point. So you can press in, make little circles. <sighs> you could press and hold and then relax. I think at this point you've been with me, most of you, long enough. You know that you can, there are many variations you could use, whatever works well for you. But I, I just want you to feel comfortable with these points and confident that you know where they are because they're really important for getting blood flow into the brain as well as they feel great on the neck. So they're good for neck alignment. <sighs> okay, lower the arms. Okay, now we got our heads on straight. Let's float the arms up and we'll pick cherries. Bend the knees so we'll get rooted. The cherry tree is rooted into the earth. And we stretch up. You can look anywhere you want to look. Anywhere that feels good to you. You can also close your eyes and not look anywhere. Just to feel the stretch along the sides of the ribs. Feel, if you can, the stretch in the lower back. Ah. Good one. And lower the arm. Ah, so that really opens the flow in the upper body. Now let's shake out the legs. Here's what we'll do. We'll do, um, let's do, let's do, I know what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. <laughs> I just went through about six different options. Hands on the lower back. We're going to hinge, uh, fold the hips back, and then press the hips forward. Okay? Hips back. You can either keep your hands flat on your lower back or you can use your knuckles and press. You can press in with your thumbs. Inhale, move the thumbs or the knuckles to another place. We're pumping that chi into the lumbar spine, the back of the pelvis. And this is where the water element tends to get a little frozen up, right? The kidneys are there, the bladder meridian, all the back of the body. This is a great place to keep the movement flowing. What stops the flow of chi through this area? Sitting does. Tension does. What else? Those are the two major ones for most of us. Of course, if you hurt your back by lifting something the wrong way, that'll cause what's call, called blood chi stagnation. But anyway, this is a great way to warm up the hips. Now do some circles. Turn that into a circle. Silk reeling for the hips. Breathing. And reverse the direction. Notice when you do this how the weight shifts through the feet. More over, wherever the hips are, that's where the weight is. That's where the center of gravity is. Over one foot, then it goes through the heels, over the other foot, circles around the toes. And good. Now come to, let's come to a wider position and go easy if you're being careful with your knees. Actually, Carol and others who have um, delicate knee situations and want to be careful, you can do this next thing sitting down. I'll show you a variation. But we're going to work on um, one of the eight brocades called Nod Head Wagtail to Cool Heart Fire because we're coming into the summer season, the season of the heart element, the fire element. So the feet can be a little turned out. First I'll show you standing, then I'll quickly show you how to do this on sitting on like a stool or a 
uh, chair. Lower into a comfortable horse stance, right? But maybe a little bit more turned out through the feet. Just a little, like, you know, 30 degrees maybe. Now rotate. Here's our spinal axis right here, our Tai Chi pole, heaven, earth. We rotate around it, just around the spine, so the knee doesn't follow along. Now here's where we nod our head and wag our tail. Head goes to one corner, the tail goes in the opposite direction, and the body faces the floor. Okay, that's important. Right, now we just turn the body over to the left, so now we're facing the left corner, and we come up. So this is a simple, nice version of this. Flat back forward, so your hips hinge back, crown of the head forward. Both knees are bent, okay? Both knees are bent, and they both, nice, beautiful. Over to the other side. Good, Claudia, good, Judy. And come up. Excellent, everybody. If your legs are getting tired, you're doing it right. <laughs> this is strength training for your legs. Here's how you do it on a chair. Got a white stool, so it almost looks like I'm in a really low horse stance. You could sit like this. You could still turn. Actually, it's a cool way to do it because you can feel how your, your hips stay still. You're twisting above your hips. Flat back over one leg. Swing over to the other leg. And come up. Good. Flat back over diagonal. It's like in front of the leg. You're not directly above the leg. You're in front of it. And up. Okay, straighten the knees for a moment. Just walk your feet in to shake them and relax them out. That's a workout, that one. Right, the aprocades, one of the myths or legends is the aprocades were created by a, a general in the Chinese army. Uh, this is in ancient, ancient days to keep his soldiers strong. And they were based on all these practices, these Qigong practices. Any questions on that? I look pretty good. Because I want to show you a nice variation. Um, somebody uh, in my class Friday was asking about stretching the calf. And here's a nice way to stretch your calf. And I kind of put these two exercises together. The uh, nod head, wag tail, and this one. So come back to the beginning. We're going to do the same thing we just did. Turn to the right corner. Flat back. Swing around to the other leg. Now this time when you get your body over your left leg, bring both hands to your left leg and just turn that front heel and the back heel till you're facing all the way to the side. Yeah, front knee is bent. Now slowly stand up. Your back knee can be slightly bent. It can be. That will give you an excellent stretch in the psoas muscles. Or, and this is not classic Qigong, but if you put your back heel down, you get a nice calf stretch, which is important. Now let's do this, everybody. Let's keep our hands stabilizing us by keeping them on our front thigh. And we'll do a little wave forward. And then up, a little wave through the spine. Doesn't have to be big. This is a bit of a balance challenge, too. Good. Nice, Terry. Good, Janet. Beautiful, Ruth. Good. Woo. Breathe. Nice, wavy, relaxing. Excellent, Mary. Excellent. Ah, uh, one more. Modify if you need. Do it larger, do it smaller, slower, whatever feels right. Now, the last time you come up, <clears throat> just pause 
relax your arms then stretch your fingers straight down it's like they're anchoring you they're anchoring you and lift the chest and look up the back of the neck stays long Ooh, that feels really good breathe nice and now come back place your hands on your front thigh and pivot around to face the front oh relax and shake it out leslie can you change your camera angle so i could see more than just your lovely head <laughs> all i could see is from here up you don't have to but if you could change your screen a little bit that would be great nice Let's try the other side. That's a big exercise for a Tuesday morning. Good job. All right, so we're going to um, just go right into turning to the right. That's better, Les. Thanks. Okay, back leg is back. Okay. Now, just to go over this, this is this is a good stretch right here, and this is the Qigong way with the back knee slightly bent. Right, Claudia? And if you feel your body upright with that back knee slightly bent, let's pause there for a moment. Don't neglect this stretch. Can you feel a lot of stretch right in the front of the hip and the groin? Maybe a lot of stretch. This is a really important place to stay flexible. That's the psoas muscle. One of the first muscles to tighten up when we get older and stop working out. And when that muscle tightens up, we start standing like this and getting back pain and so it's a fabulous thing to get kind of friendly with this stretch right here so if you're feeling a lot of stretch feel free to just stand there and kind of relax into it and breathe into it or put your hands on your front thigh option to straighten the back leg that stretches through the bladder meridian and then do a little spinal wave, soft and flowing. Oh, exhale as you flow forward. Inhale. Exhale, let me watch. Great. Feel very anchored and grounded through those legs. Boy, this looks good, everybody. Ah, oh, new, relatively new people, you're doing so well. Whoops, lost my balance there. I got so excited. Wow. Okay, and when you've had enough, just face forward. Ah, shake it out. Fantastic, everybody. That's a fairly advanced exercise. You all did beautifully. So let's just draw the chi back to our center, returning to center. Inhale and gathering the energy we cultivated, swirling all the way from our feet and ankle and knee joints through the hips, through the, all the internal organs. We're just going to kind of organize it back to the center. One more time. And exhale. Good. Nice. So that's a little yin moment for us to balance out that yang effort that we just used on that big exercise. You're so warmed up now, though, and it is almost summer. Yang, height of the yang season is the summer. So I wanted to go over Iron Bridge. It's part of this arm strengthening series that I'm teaching this week. So I wanted to go over the mechanics because it's a great exercise for your back. It also opens the psoas muscles. 
it's primarily taught to strengthen the spine. It's called Iron Bridge because it makes your spine as strong as a iron bridge, I guess. But we've already done the, a couple of the positions that it's based on. One is you bring your palms to your lower back, right? So it's going to, this part of your back will be supported as it gets stronger. So, and you can face, you could watch facing forward, but we could do it facing sideways when the time comes, but I'll, I'll demonstrate. Bend the knees a little bit. Now, important, tuck the tail, tuck the tail under, and you're going to contract the glute and the hamstring muscles, which happens when you tuck your tail, it happens automatically. Squeeze the, tuck the tail under, then you incline your upper body back just a tad, just enough that you now feel a straight line from the knees through the front of the body through the ears. Your hands are still on your lower back. Now, chin is level. And that's the iron bridge position. Okay? Come forward and relax. Ah. Ah. Notice if you feel the effect that had on your whole body. You might feel like a, a rush of energy. Right? Iron Bridge. This is the basic, most important part of it is what we're doing right here. Breathe. Bend the knees. Tuck the tail under. Squeeze the butt. Just hinge the hips forward a little bit. So the shoulders end up behind you. Good. Now we're going to stand here. You'll feel a lot of work in your abdomen muscles. They're, they're isometrically contracted. Breathe, deep, full breath. You may feel yourself starting to tremble a little. That's a natural sign, a good sign that you're doing it correctly. Right, make sure you're looking straight forward, Tim and Leslie. Good, because so your neck is also long. Right, good. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. -hoo -hoo. And come up. Oh, oh. Now the second part, you do this. And if your back feels okay leaning forward, you do this. If that doesn't bother your lower back. And this is like represents cooling out all that effort in a nice stream of cool flowing water. And then you come back up again. And we gather up and flow through the center. Kind of compose and organize our chi. Make sure we're still calm. Everything's happy and flowing. <laughs> now let me ask you all a question, and you could do mime to answer if you want. How many people felt the work from their knees and their quads as well as perhaps their stomach muscles? Anybody feel that? Yeah, Hinda? Yeah? Good. Yeah. If you feel that, it means you're strengthening those muscles too. And those are the strongest. There are three kinds of muscle contraction. This isn't Qigong talk. This is anatomy. Um, there's concentric contraction when you like shorten a muscle like Popeye, or the muscle contracts to its center. And then there's eccentric when you're contracting but lengthening the muscle like what we just did. And that's the one that they've proven, the physiologists are, you know, have proven that's the way to strengthen the muscles, the, that's the strongest way to strengthen muscles. Eccentric contraction, yeah. <laughs> so what I mean by that is, okay, this is we're bending the knees. That's a little eccentric contraction, just bending the knees and standing up. Now we uh, tuck the tail under, we lean back, but are really, we're tightening here, but you may feel a lot of stretch in your quads. That's excellent. They're stretching and they're strengthening. Now, for those of you who want to make the, do a, the more advanced version, you stay there and you make two little okay signs like that. And that, uh, I guess, represents that you're holding, you're pulling the energy into the kidneys. All right, and you could stand like that. 
and breathe. And again, you may tremble. Woo Iron Bridge, it's a strong one. Keep your hands on your lower back if you need. There's no shame in that at all. It's still a hard exercise, still a challenging exercise. One more breath. Woo. And then come up. Ah, and we chill out Ooh, in the cooling water. Ah. And come on up and relax. Flow the energy down. I don't think that one can be done in a chair. I haven't, I'm trying to imagine if it would work in a chair. I don't know that it would. But to just do it very carefully standing is really, really healthy and good for your spine, especially. One more time. Exhale. Okay, that was hard. So let's do a nice, let's focus on, uh, let that part of the body just absorb all that circulation. We'll focus on our wrists. This is an exercise called the Golden Dragon Stretches Its Claws. It's part of the Shibashi method. The, the backs of the wrists stretch up, and then you open your hands and come down. That's the stretching of the claws. Okay? Relax. The backs of the wrists go up, stretching the claws. Pumping the, the chi and the flow through the insides and the outsides of the wrists. So many powerful acupressure points there. You could add a little extra bend of the knees as the claws go down. Paws go up. You could straighten more. Bend the knees. So we're continuing to pump the energy through the legs. Good. Excellent. Beautiful. 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 One more time. That was so nice. I'm just enjoying watching you do this. Nice. And relax. Ah. Shibashi. I have no idea what that means. Somebody coined the phrase shibashi to talk about these, the series of exercises. We've done a few of them from the second shibashi form. The other one that I've, I really like um, that we've been doing is called the crane worships the moon. Now here's another interesting way to train your balance. We step a little bit or we shift the weight onto the left foot. Step the right foot back and turn a little bit to the right. That's what the lower body's doing. Then step to the right. The left foot steps back. Turn a little to the left. Good. And anybody who's done salsa or um, swing dance, it's very similar. When you step back, your body turns, right? It's a very natural movement. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's a very natural movement. You don't have to step far. Okay, so that's the, what the legs are doing. Now, the crane worships the moon. As we step side, the arms float out to the side. The palms come together, and as we step back, the hands come down to the center of the chest. Both knees are bent. Okay? Then, foot steps out. Go through a moment of balance on both legs. Just a moment. As we shift to the other foot, cross that foot back. Right. Shift. Both feet. Inhale and exhale. That's it. And inhale and exhale. 
As with everything, if this is confusing, here's an old dancer trick. Do just the feet. Do just the feet until you feel comfortable with the feet. Because once you get the feet, the arms and the hands and the breath will just enhance and kind of support. There you go. Inhale. We're very grounded. We shift onto one leg. And we're grounded facing the corner. Facing front. Facing the corner. Yeah. That's it. Facing front. That transition is important. And then don't overcross. Good. Isn't that pretty? It's nice. Very good. Congratulations also, everybody. This is a pretty tricky balance exercise. Beautiful. And rest. Shake it out. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot to teach this one. This is really fun. We're going to do a, another balance exercise. Very, very different. That's a graceful crane. Blah, 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 you know, flowing. This is a monkey. This is a monkey washing its fruit. But the same principles. Feet are together. Modify. If you're, It's hardest when the feet are nest. Well, in some ways, it's harder when the feet are close together. Anyway, we start by slight flex of the wrists, bending forward. This represents washing your bunch of bananas out. You're washing your fruit out. Then the backs of the wrists, like we did earlier, lift the fruit out of the water. Come sa, right? Yeah, you come all the way up. So you wash your fruit. Then you lift it up. And you look. And you look. And then you come center. And again, you wash the fruit, right? Lift the fruit up. Bye, Judy. And look. And look. Wash it. Lift it up. Look, look. Right? Now, here's the option. And this is the way I like to teach balance. This is the way I taught myself balance. And continue to reteach myself balance as my body continues to change. Because that's what bodies do. They change all the time. We wash the fruit. We lift up now. Here's the balance part. Shift your weight into the front of the foot just until the heels barely leave the floor. So this shouldn't be too hard to do. It's really small. Here, I'll do it again. Let's show, I'll show you facing sideways. Here I am in line with gravity. Here I am. I just shifted into the front of my feet. And my heels are just high enough I could slide a piece of paper under them. Okay, so that's our balance challenge. And then we look one way and the other way. And then we go down to the earth and we watch the fruit again. <laughs> so this reminds us to get grounded. Then we lift, shift, look, and look. Yeah. And then lower the heels. Wash the fruit. <laughs> right? That's where the balance is going to be, through those feet. So this kind of reminds us. It gets us down there, looking at our feet almost. Then we lift the fruit, but our feet are still on the ground. We shift into the front of the foot. Look. And look. Very good. <laughs> Ted, you're a natural monkey. Excellent. And again, wash the fruit. <laughs> Lift. Good, Ruth. Shift. Good, Mary. Look. Nice, Claudia. And look. And good, Deb. Good. And relax. Ah, ah, shake it out. Ah, great. That's one of the monkey frolics, one of the old, old, old practices where we imitate a monkey and it's a little silly. 
because that's also associated with the heart element. Play, joy, childlike movement. That happens to also strengthen our balance. Now let's just shake. Wow. Tuesday technique class. We did a lot of Qigong technique today, so you should feel good about that. You guys learned a lot. Fun ain't over yet, but let's shake out any anything. You know, shake in some energy, some vitality, shake out stress or fogginess. And I thought it would be nice today to come to stillness, just stand in neutral for a moment, feel the chi, breathe, feel that movement within the stillness. As you breathe and relax, you'll find that the body naturally does a kind of flowing wave-like movement or a, a little rocking movement like we do with bamboo in the wind at the end of the class. It's very natural. <sighs> now step the feet a little wider together and we're going to go over, this is an exercise I've been teaching called uh, the fisherman casts his nets from also from Shibashi form number two. Right? Just a very gentle casting your nets far over a nice, beautiful, calm sea. You know, the way the sea looks in the morning when it's not all choppy. Casting your nets. Beautiful flowing movement. Palms are facing out. Oh, man, I'm so glad I'm recording this because you look so good. looks beautiful. We got a record of you looking beautiful doing Fisherman Casts His Nets. Now, this movement is the same basic movement that we do in one of the primary exercises for the heart element. Okay, we do this like this. This is called cloud hands. Now, cloud hands, the only difference really is that the palm, the top palm goes across the, you know, travels across the chest. And I always think of this as, as like a mirror, mirror, mirroring the heart energy, right? The heart is the fire element. Right? And so you, the body turns just the same way. And the bottom arm, rather than facing, rather than the palm facing out, the bottom palm can either face the earth. That's the way I think I've taught it most of the time. So it's as though the ha bottom hand now is skimming along. You could think of it skimming over the water or skimming like feeling the earth energy yeah now this is the flow section of the class we really did a lot of activation today and now we get to relax and reap the harvest of all that warming up and strengthening we totally relax and let our chi move us Right. The bottom hand, you could also have the bottom hand like it's scooping, like it's the fingers float down, if that feels more natural to you. That's a nice way to do it, like it's a little circle. We're moving like we ourselves have turned into a cloud. Yeah, beautiful. 
Shifting the weight side to side. There, very nice. So feeling the weight shifting from foot to foot reminds us how we're connected to the earth. The heart is often referred to in Chinese medicine as a flower. One of the beautiful metaphors for heart energy is that the flower opens to the sun. So flowers need to be really rooted, right? So that's why we're feeling the earth through our legs. And those strong roots help connect us to the water element. We could soak water up through our roots. So now we're not being a cloud, we're being a flower, aren't we? Because our heart is opening like a blossom, opening into the sun. It's a really nice image this time of year when everyone's gardens are blooming. Your heart could be like a big peony. Wee! And taking that metaphor even deeper into an even more beautiful concept, you know how the beautiful fragrance of a flower attracts. It attracts the bees and the hummingbirds and the butterflies. It attracts us. We want to we're drawn to the beautiful fragrance of a flower open in the sun. Well, when your heart energy is open and blooming, it is also an attractive energy. And you can play around with this. You could do cloud hands and just be a, like a human flower. <laughs> just swaying in the sun, soaking up the water from the earth, feeling really the qualities associated with the heart, with the fire element are, like I said, joy, love, playfulness, compassion for yourself, for others, patience. I'm always surprised when I remember that patience is part of the fire element. Cultivating being okay in the present moment. You do this, you cultivate this energy in yourself, and people will find it very attractive and pleasant to be around. And you'll feel it is very attractive and pleasant to feel that way. Ah, so we're clouds, we're flowers, whatever metaphor works for you. And then bring it back to the center. And let's hold the arms like this and embracing the tree. And this is like a wonderful, wonderful way to hold the energy, to feel it swirling from one set of fingers to the other, swirling through the heart center. That's one cycle of energy through the lungs, through the heart. You could breathe and picture that. Feel that. And then there's also the cycle of the energy that goes up from the tips of the tip of the tailbone up the spine, all the way up through the gates to the brain, up to the brain, down through that those points we were massaging earlier, carries the energy down through the heart and through all the internal organs. That's the small heavenly circle up the back and down the front. Relax the elbows, relax the shoulders, just breathe and feel your feet like nice soft roots plunged into the earth, soaking up the water from the earth. Soaking up the chi through the legs, through the hip joints, through the spine, all the way up to our minds, all the way down again through the organs, through the heart, the lungs, liver, spleen, stomach, small and large intestine.
Feeling the feet grounded, the heart free and floating and open to the sun. Crown of the head up. The shoulders could be resting. Arms could be resting like the branches of a flower, just resting. Good. Now open your eyes. Bring your hands together. Bring your hands right to the heart center. And then bring the feet together and bring the hands all the way down to the lower Dantian. So we're connected the heart center to the earth center where we began the whole class, right? With wave breath. So close your eyes now. Rock and sway. Bamboo in the wind. Birds are singing their hearts out here. You could hear them. Be as relaxed as a nice, flexible, young tree. Gently moving in the breeze. Hmm. Deepen your breathing. Open your eyes. And let's do our three Taoist gratitude salutes. First one is to each other. Thanks for practicing, everybody. Thanks for practicing together. Much more powerful, much more fun. Second is to our, the teachers who've passed this technique and these beautiful metaphors and poetic kind of this poetic way of looking at the body. We could be grateful that we still have access to this. And the third one, bow to yourself. Acknowledge this is self-compassion. You're taking the most important care of yourself by doing this. You're building your chi. You're building your body's ability to heal itself, your immune system, your mental immune system, everything. So great work, and thank you. I'll be here Thursday for sure. Then I won't be here Sunday, but I'll be here Thursday. And if you'd like to join me for the new exercise for the backs of the arms, please do. We spent three minutes, and I'll sh go over that exercise with you. Any questions, feel free to uh, ask. You're welcome. You're doing Right? I do it e after every class. We take a five, minute uh, five minutes to learn a strengthening exercise. So mm -hmm. this one is based on the Iron Bridge that we did in class, right? Bye. Bye, Mary. Ruth, so good to see you. Nice to see you. Doing great. Okay, so Iron Bridge, you tighten your tush, you tuck your tail under and hinge forward. Now, if you let your arms go and your chin is forward, I know you're watching me, but if your chin is forward, your neck will be long. Right? And your arms would just dangle. Now lift your arms against gravity. Palms are up. That activates your tricep muscles. Now, here's the hard part. We go in and out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep tucking your tail under. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Your arms will want to drop. But keep pushing them up. <laughs> Nine, ten, four, good. Three, four, good. Six, seven. Draw those shoulders way down and back. Three, four. I lost count. Uh oh, seven. Ideally, we do this a hundred times. Breathe. Six, seven. I think this is about 82, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 90, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 100. Oh, and relax. Ah, oh, did you feel it? Yeah. Great exercise, everybody. That's Now, I taught it Sunday a little differently. Not, just, it doesn't matter. They both work. To, oh, look at that pretty dog. Hi, doggy. Um, today I taught it with the palms up, and again, they will really want to lose altitude because it's hard to push them up. Yeah. That is to turn them a little more like that so that the ow, backs of the hands face each other. Good, Terry. That's the idea. Good, Margaret. Like that. <laughs> and, if you're, and you'll see as your triceps get stronger, you'll see the tricep muscle. I never really yeah. understood what the tricep muscle looked like. I just knew that... 
when it was strong, you lose that underarm dingle dangle. Yeah. Like, ooh. No, we all have it after a certain point. It's like, how much do you have, though? And do you have muscles under the angle? doesn't look so bad if you got muscles under there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other way, sure, absolutely. Here was the first one. Good alignment, otherwise it doesn't work so well. And we do, this is called the basketballs. Do 10 or 20 in this direction, then the other direction. Okay. Thumbs up. Oh, that's this is a great one, Terry. This is for the deltoid muscles. Yeah. What you're doing is you're doing internal and external rotation, right? So you know whenever we turn the arms in or out, we're activating all the way to the back, the upper back. Yeah. So that was the first week, right? And then the second week we did the goal posts in and out. It was funny. Who was it? it was on Sunday? And she kept, oh, it was Lynn Podway. She was funny. She was like, but I can't get my elbows together. And I was like, but you're getting them together. <laughs> it's hard, but you're getting your elbows together. Yeah, yes, exactly. Right? So you do that 10 times or so, and then you hold them together, and you do nudges. Okay. To the center, to one side, to the other side. And then... Fountain. That's a really hard workout to do all three of them together. But remember, what we're working on is this different, it's not just the exercises, it's doing them twice a day. So that's why I'm breaking it down, just to one exercise. You do this once in the first part of the day, once in the second part of the day. That's all. This is what I 